my job is to kind of enlighten you guys and answer questions on direct mail marketing. Um, if you don't mind, I'd just like to know a little bit about you. So how many of you guys are marketing on a monthly basis? Just raise your hand. Cool. So about 20%. Um, that's what I'm going to try to just kind of work for the 80% percentile is kind of walk you through the process what you need to do and your thought process and so I might call on someone um, to kind of reenact a call so if if Chris uh, okay <laughs> mate what not yet but would you be okay with that what's your name Lisa okay Lisa or Lisa oh, I'm kidding all right here we go all right so the first thing I want you guys to understand is the fundamentals and we need to understand Lisa the process um, and then where do we get our leads let's kind of depending on the leads depends on how often I might touch them or market to them and then I, I think it's important in anything to be consistent in your mailing uh, I, I hear a lot of investors come to me and say George we bought this list and it didn't work out and I said, well, how long did you mail to these people? Well, for one month. Um, unfortunately, direct mail is not an instant gratification lead source. It takes time. And, and I know that we don't like hearing that because we like, we like to get deals done um, every month. And, but it is something that I just kind of want you guys to, to understand that, you know, it's not a quick fix. Um, a lot of people do it sporadically, and that's why they get sporadic results. So at the, at, just understand that I think you need to be mailing at least 1,500 pieces a month, okay? I know that's a, a, a big pill to swallow, right? But to get enough leads coming in, we need calls. What I found is if I'm not writing offers, Joanne, I'm probably not buying houses. Would you agree with that? So we need calls in order to get in front of them um, to go on appointments. Then, and only then, have I found I'm good at writing offers. So I'm just telling you, um, if you came to me tomorrow and said, I want to start mailing, I, I got what you said, how many, sh I would say at least 1,500 a month. That means you need to have 4,500 in your database. Okay? 4,500 distressed or motivated owners in your database because you're going to touch them every fourth month. Okay? And I'll go over that here in a minute. The first thing I would suggest to all you guys is define your area. Okay? Me personally, I'm looking for homes that were built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And the reason why is most of those properties have deferred maintenance. Yes, there's some great houses in Anna and Melissa and Cedar Hill that are newer, but I like, I usually find better deals when there's more deferred maintenance, if that makes sense. I'm not, I'm just so, my backyard would be finding areas that have 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s, because someone has lived there for 30 years and, and ne never repainted. You know, that's the type of situation I like going into. Um, I also think that you guys need to understand where are you willing to drive four times a week? If you're not willing to go on an appointment to Colleyville, right? then you shouldn't be marketing to Colleyville. If you're not willing to drive because I don't want to rearrange my schedule, I do not market to somewhere, uh, to a, a location or a zip code that I'm not willing to drive four times a week. All right, work your backyard. My suggestion is find more leads in those zip codes. Don't go farther out, just really hone in on your zip code because you're going to learn it better and better and better. Joanne, I know where you live. We're going to, you know, we just need to find more leads to fill that 4,500, whatever it is. If it's 3,000 to 4,500 owners, okay? But the big thing is if you're not willing to go on an appointment the next day, I probably wouldn't market there. All right, so just keep that in mind. Number two is the phone. 
we got to figure out this. You know, a student called me and said, all right, I've got my phone. I'm ready to go. And, and I said, okay, I'm just going to test you. So over the next week, I called his phone number four times. And he never answered it once. Now, I'm not saying that he, you're going to lose deal. Yes, I am. If you don't answer the phone, you're going to lose deals. And, and my analogy that I always use is... Um, uh, when my buddy's, my, my, my next door neighbor's house was leaking, I could tell from the second story floor there was water coming out of the house. And that's not typical, all right? And so I called him. He was on vacation. I said, um, I said, Scott, what do you want me to do? And he's like, turn the water off and call a plumber. Because I walked into the house and it was six inches of water. And he has, his whole house is hardwood floors. So he's like, turn up the water and call a plumber. I mean, he didn't ask me, can you get three bids? And you, you know what I mean? He said, let's find a solution. When people make a decision that they want to sell their house, that's a huge decision, right? And people don't like to go and call. I didn't, call, I didn't, I didn't leave one message when I called plumbers. I hired the first person who answered the phone and I said, how fast can you get over it? He said, we'll be over there in an hour. I said, done. I never asked what is his daily rate because I needed a solution right then. Sellers are the same thing. Y'all need to figure out. I know Google Voice is free, but you got to answer the phone. You got to give yourself that. If you're not, then you need to spend $100 a month having someone else answer your phone. Okay, I'm standing here talking to you tonight. It's the only reason, and I'm not worried about my phone ringing because I have Answer Connect answering all my calls. Okay, they have a script, and it costs me $100 a month. I get 75 minutes, which is not a lot, but it's enough. One deal that they book for me tomorrow is going to pay for that service for the next five years. Does that make sense? So think about if you're going to spend money on direct mail, put yourself in a good position. A, that you're willing to drive the next day or the following day. Not having to readjust your schedule, right? And then answer the darn phone, okay? You got to answer the phone because people aren't going to leave. Some people are going to leave a message and that somebody might be that, that deal that makes you five to $15,000. Uh, return addresses. You know, I, I know this is a big thing. You know, we don't like giving our home address and things like that. You know, there's a lot of third-party companies like Mailbox, etc., UPS Store. Um, I like to try to, you know, I don't, I tip, I, I'm lucky because we have an office, so I put my office location on Keller Springs on all of our um, mailing, but you guys don't have a, an office. You know, you might think about spending some money for that UPS store that has a physical street address. I typically don't want people knowing where I live, and I don't put my home address um, just because of that. I, I don't know if you know this, but there's some kind of weirdos out there in this world. Would you, would you agree with that? Okay. So I use a physical address on the return. It's just a small thing that I, I, I don't put a P.O. box. I want people to think that they can come by and, you know, obviously most of you guys don't have an office, so that's the next best thing. Any questions so far? Is this making sense? All right. Um, Robert, the next thing I want, I see you. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is on all of your marketing pieces, have some type of website. Anytime I get a, a marketing piece from somebody or a, a business that I have an interest in, maybe it's a tire company and I want to, or it's, a, I have a Jeep, so, you know, I get maybe something and I go to their website and I check them out. But um, basically you want this website to not be about you. It's about how you can fix their problem or how you can solve their problem. So I'm not a big proponent on having a 10 page website. I need just more of a landing page website where we get to the point. On my website, it, I have a video of me. I had, um, I have a, I had um, someone that was at my house cleaning our house. 
I grabbed her and I said, hey, do you mind coming outside? And I, she held the camera, the iPhone, and I just, I did a two-minute video. And just looking in the camera and saying, thank you so much for coming to my website. You received a marketing piece. I'm talking to them. That's what I would suggest because people want to buy with people they like or are, are alike. So um, if you could stand there, if, if you feel comfortable, that's what I would suggest because I think you'll get, you'll get a response. So a call to action is, hey, call the number or fill out the form. And if you feel comfortable, you know, having your picture on there or a video that is embedded on the site is what I might suggest. It's two websites that I've used, um, oncarrot.com and leadpropeller.com. Okay? There's a lot of WordPress websites out there that are just fine. Um, I think these are probably more than you need. If there's any developer out here that, man, could fix, all I need is a landing page that I can put a video on and a form box and a phone number, that's all you really need. But people will go to your website before they'll call you when they get a marketing piece. You need to have that marketing piece on there. But if you feel comfortable, talk to them, right? What's your name? Van. What is it, Van? Yeah, Van, I, um, I think if you, you know, you sit in front of the camera and said, hey guys, thanks so much, my name's Van. I've been in the business for a couple years. I'm, in, I'm a real estate investor. Thanks so much for coming to my website. Do me a favor, the first thing in order for me to make you an offer is fill out the form below. Me or one of my associates will call you in the next three hours. Or, you don't wanna fill out the form, great. Call the number below. You're you see it right there? Thanks so much. Look forward to meeting you. Again, fill out the form below or give us a call. Thanks. Boom. That's it. That will make an impression on someone, Van. All right. Select your seller leads. I know there are a lot of leads out there. Um, the type of mailing list that will, be, will generate the strongest results for your campaign will depend on several factors. The type of owners, are they facing foreclosure? Are they distressed or motivated or somewhat motivated? The type of properties, again, I, I found, and this is just my opinion, that I try to locate a little bit older homes versus newer because what I found is there's more repairs needed. And then your message. Y'all need to be very, it doesn't need to be fancy, but it needs to be succinct. My marketing philosophy on my mail piece is three things. Grab their attention with an image, right? We're very visual. So grab their attention, some type of um, image, whether it's a house that's really dilapidated or a beautiful house or it doesn't matter, but you need something that grabs their attention. Then you ask them a question. That's number two. Ask a question. Do you have a house on Diamond Oaks that you'd like to sell? That's the question. And then make a promise. Your promise is, I will make you a cash offer and close in as little as 10 days. So grab, ask, promise. That's, my, that's what your marketing piece, your message should be. So let's talk about some leads. Uh, and these are not in any sequential order of what I think are the best. Um, well, I'll give you my best. I'll give you my what I think are the best at the end. But an absentee owner, an absentee owner is someone who owns a piece of real estate but doesn't live there. Now, I take it a next step. I like absentee owners that live out of the state of Texas. Does that make sense? So if I was trying to compile a list of 4,500 owners... They're not all gonna be absentee owners because I'm trying to work in an area that I'm willing to drive four times a week. But I would first try to find the absentee owners that don't live in Dallas. I want the people that live in North Carolina, New York, California, things of that nature, because things that go wrong, it's harder for them to fix. Does that make sense? Number two is post-bankruptcy. A post-bankruptcy is someone who has filed bankruptcy and didn't, didn't pay the bankruptcy courts. When you file bankruptcy, guys, you have to 
continue, you, you still need to pay your mortgage. Does that make sense? A chapter 13 bankruptcy is a reorganization. When you file bankruptcy, you still have to pay your biggest creditor, which is your mortgage, and you have to pay the bankruptcy courts. If you miss either of those payments, the courts have the right to lift the bankruptcy protection. Does that make sense? It's called a stay. They can lift the stay. And so there, there are people that have filed bankruptcy, but now the courts have said, we're, 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 you're not going to have bankruptcy protection anymore. And guess who's the biggest creditor? They're going to start, they're going to foreclose on them pretty soon. So I like going after them because they have one less option. Bankruptcy was their savior, and now it's not. Number, t number three is a pre-foreclosure, and this goes for the majority of foreclosures are at the trustee's auction, and there's also the sheriff auction leads. So I bought a house um, where the lady had been paid off. She inherited the property. Um, it was actually, do y'all know Campisi's Pizza? Have y'all heard of that? So it was the daughter. She inherited the property, didn't pay the taxes, um, and she was scheduled to be foreclosed on. She was $87,000 behind on her property taxes. So I reached out to her, and she decided to sell prior to going to the auction. Now, we didn't, I didn't buy the property. This was a higher-end property. Um, I didn't, you know, I paid her more than $87,000, let us but the lead came from the delinquent tax list, okay? Um, those come out once a month, and my rule of thumb on these two leads is I try to hit them twice, okay? I'll hit an absentee owner once every four months. I'll hit a post-bankruptcy once every four months. They're going to get something from me once every four months. With the sheriff and the pre-foreclosure, I try to hit them twice in one month. So the, when do the leads have to be posted? When do the leads come out? 20 days, 21 days, right? So that's always a Tuesday. So I'll send it out. I usually don't get my list compiled until... 20 days, so I usually send it out. It's always a Friday, 18 days before the auction, which is a Friday, and then 11 days before the auction. So boom, boom. I send the same people. This Now, I'm going to send them a different postcard um, or letter or marketing piece, but I hit them twice back to back. Okay? Probates, they're going to receive something every four months. Every fourth month, they're going to receive something until I see that they don't own the property anymore. All right, I've marketed to people for five years. I just, I just update my records to see, have they sold their house? Eventually, I'm going to, hopefully they call me, okay? Probate, y'all know what those, that is. Code violations may or may not, uh, you know, there's usually a little bit more equity in probate. There's sometimes some equity in pre-foreclosures. Code violations as well. That's where your neighbor hasn't mowed their grass or they haven't drained the pool and now it's infested with mosquitoes and things like that. And the city has come out and um, drained the pool or fixed the fence or mowed the lawn. So you would go to the code violation department of every city to get that. I'm not sure of any third-party company. We as a company, FLS, do not provide these leads. But there's something to that. Vance, you want to kind of put your fishing pole into a pond where not everybody is. Code violations would be that, in my opinion. 60 to 90 day delinquent leads. I haven't found a reputable company that, you know, I've bought a lot of these leads and half the time they're good and half the time they're not. So I don't know that it's a great, um, it, to me it is a great lead source if you know they're actually 16 to 90 days. But um, um, again, we don't offer those. But if you can get your hands on a reputable list in your backyard, again, it's all under the guise of how can we find more people that are motivated in our backyard than going farther out to, to search pre-foreclosures. 
Uh, number seven is MLS. Um, you know, I always look at MLS to see if there's any deals, but everybody has access, right? So that's the first thing. I was talking to a, a, um, a loan officer and real estate agent. I was like, how are you finding your deals? MLS. The problem is everybody sees that, and there's a lot of people that will drive up the price. We need to find the people that I can deal directly, you know, off-market deals, so to speak. Uh, high equity, long ownership. So when I say high equity, what do you think that means? Excuse me, not high equity. When I say long term, somebody raise their hand and, and tell me what your definition of long term is. Yes, sir, in the suit. Okay, cool. Anybody else? He said grandparents have lived in the house for 50 years plus. In the back right here. Anything over 10 years. Anybody else? 13? 5, 5? 15. Okay. All right. Those, there's not an incorrect or correct answer. Um, my definition is anything over 15. Anything over 15. So I... You know, I scrub the appraisal district in the zip codes that I want, and I basically say who's owned their house for 15 plus years. Now, if there's a, if there's a lot of them, then I'm going to go to 20. Uh, all right. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to do a mix, but I want to know because more than likely they don't have as much debt. Okay. That kind of goes in line with the gentleman in the suit said over 65. He said my grandparents have owned this house. For 50 years. I also look at the appraisal district and say, who are all the people that have an over 65 exemption? Okay. So you can go to the appraisal district or you can, you know, um, we can pull that data for you. So you've got absentee owners. These are what I call appraisal, mining the appraisal district. Absentee owners, I like out-of-state absentee owners, high equity, or really it's not high equity. I can't guarantee they have high equity, but 15, 20 years of ownership, usually there's more equity than not. And then the over 65, what I found is someone that's over 65 usually has less debt than the 35-year-old. Okay? Let's talk about delinquent tax owners. These are people that are one year behind on their property taxes. So I believe that I don't market to someone who's one year behind because that could happen to, I mean, I, I have got that data and I see that there's 100,000 people that are one year behind and then 30,000 that are two. So I like going after people that are at least two years behind. Not one, but two. Now, I might be not selling you guys as much data, but I'm just telling you what I would go after. Okay? Two years or more. Divorce leads, I feel like there's motivation. When I bought properties, a lot of properties, it, and when I asked them, what was your hardship? We got a divorce, and we can't make it. So approaching homeowners or approaching owners that you see that they got the house, either the husband or wife, every four months, hey, if you ever need to sell your house quickly, I'm here. That's, again, it's costing me 40 to 50 cents to convey that message every four months. And I'm just updating my, the tax roll to see, have they sold it? Boom, they're off of my list. All right, I purge my data. The last one are vacant properties, and you may or may not have heard me, but how do you find out, and y'all know, a lot of you, I know you know, but um, how do we find vacant properties in one hour? If, if I told you, you wanna know all the vacant, like, you, you sir, what's your name? Troy. Troy, do you mind telling me, Troy, where you live? What city? Yeah. Carrollton. So Troy, putting you on the spot, did you, I can, I'll know every vacant house in Carrollton and Farmer's Ranch in less than an hour by going to one spot. It's the water department. Every 
Every city has a, a water department, correct? You want to know all the vacant homes in the city of Carrollton, Farmers Branch? Go to the water department because when there's not water, generally there's not an occupant. Generally. Okay? But it's a good way for you to find a list. Okay? There's really two places to go. The United States Post Office and the city water department. Go ask them nicely, Troy, if they will provide you with a list of all the accounts that have been turned off for at least 90 days. You don't want something turned off in the last, just for two days. I want to know everything for the last, what, what accounts in your city have been turned off for at least not residential accounts? Specify that. Put that in writing. They might tell you, Troy, we can't give that to you. Yeah, they can. You might have to provide them with a open records request. Y'all heard of that? The Texas Open Records Request? So just look, Google that. Open Records Request. But put it in writing. They might charge you, Troy, but it might be $10. You know, some, some municipalities charge. It, it's pretty nominal. I think the, the, the biggest I've spent is $25 with, I think it was Louisville. Yes, sir. In the back. Okay. Yeah. So vacant. I mean, sometimes yes, we have to go. When, once I get the the address, then I check the appraisal district to see is the, is the mailing address the same as the property. In a lot of cases, it is. I'll mail it to see if it gets forwarded somewhere. If it comes back, then you need to take kind of step two, which is more of a skip trace. Skip trace these people that don't want to be found. And for a couple dollars, I could tell you. Are you willing to pay for the group? There's a company called TLO.com. TLO. TLO.com is a transunion company, and it's not going to be, none, not all of you guys are going to qualify, so to speak, um, because they don't want everybody to have it, but it's, it's a pretty useful database. Um, it has cell numbers, it has email addresses, it has social security numbers. It's pretty powerful. It had, they had my cell number when I looked up me. Right? I'm not saying that I'm hiding, but I was surprised. They had my sister's phone number, my sister's name. It, it was just, and it cost me $2. Did they? Okay. I guess, I mean, they don't charge me a monthly fee, but maybe now new because I've been telling people. They're like, yeah. So, um, anyway. That, that's, you gotta, you know, some people don't want to be found, you know, that's when you have to go into databases to try to find relatives, um, and that's what this prop, this company will do. They find heirs and relatives and things of that nature. Okay, so let's talk about frequency and length. Um, again, we're talking about 3,000 to 4,500 records. How many times do you mail them? The answer is four times a year. So I'm assuming it's going to take you a couple weeks to digest what I've said on stage. So your first mailing is in July. So you're going to have three lists of 1,000 to 1,500 addresses, correct? So you have list A goes out in July, B in August, C in September. Then you come back to, to list A in October. And it just goes from there. A, B, C, A, B, C. So we got to get a list of 3,000 to 4,500 records. And then, boom, we bring them into our database. And we're giving that to our fulfillment guy or gal, our mail place. Okay? And they know it's going to drop. Now, this is what I do for the absentee owners, the post bankruptcies, the probate. I, you know, I generally mail the pre foreclosures and think things that are more distressed. I mail those in house fast. You know, just print those off uh, from my printer. But 
you know, my, my fulfillment center guy, he's, he's like, all right, how many we, you know, we got 2,000, sometimes I bump it up, um, but it's, you know, generally 1,500 to 2,000 postcards that are going out monthly, okay? Any questions there? Pricing, black and white, it's going to run you 40 cents approximately. You might have a better, better rate than that. That's, you know, tax, title, and license. Yes, sir? I do have a question on the last part. We're talking about 1500 per, per month. Yeah. Those are separate. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, you know, kind of the, going back to the list, the, the code violations, the probate, the post-bankruptcies, the absentee owners, the delinquent tax owners, those are, I'm getting, going to hit them four times a year. But the pre-foreclosure and the sheriff, I'm hitting them twice. And I do it, basically, I'll check to see if they got foreclosed on. And if they didn't get foreclosed, I'm going to hit them again. Yes. Yeah, the, the original matrix has that I give to my mail guy is 1500 to 2000 a month. I personally, at the house, will send out 200 from my printer. Okay? And those I'm hitting, boom, boom, just 18 and 11 days. Is there by, does this, is this make, now how long do you mail this person? Until ownership changes. UOC. Until ownership changes. Okay? You keep on mailing them until you see they don't own it anymore. UOC. 40 cents for black and white. I know Tim, he gets better pricing than that. Investor Direct Mail, we got better pricing than that. But none of y'all, we're, we're not mailing 10,000. I'm not telling you to mail 10,000 pieces. You got to do higher volume to get higher, better pricing. For that 2,000 pricing, you should get this. Black and white, it's four color, is 50 cents each. And then first class letters are 85 cents. Personally, I don't, I don't think you should do anything other than postcards. I know there's yellow letters and things like that. I think my postcard is going to last about two seconds. Right? I mean, it, it, even though I have, I grabbed their attention, at least they looked at it while they're going to the trash. <laughs> right? I, I grabbed their attention and they're like, yeah. It's not the right time. That's okay. I'm going to hit them in another four months. But this is a volume thing, guys. So, again, I don't think you have to go with a four-color postcard to get a return. So, 40 cents is what you need to kind of budget for. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's timing. You, another example was my wife and I decided to build a pool. We had already decided pretty much on a pool builder. We'd had, you know, four pool builders, and we really liked one of them. And I got a postcard. My wife threw this postcard at me on a Saturday, and it said, this pool for this amount of money. I'm like, yeah, right. But I called them. And initially, and the guy answered the phone, I mean, he sounded like he had had a rough, it was Sunday morning, and so he said, hello, and I said, uh, is this XYZ pool? Yeah. I'm like, um, I got your postcard, and I'm in, I'm in the market for a pool. Can you meet me out here? This was Sunday. I said, can you meet me tomorrow? I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to build a pool. That, and he's like, all right. And so he came out there and he blew me away. When he came out there, he blew me away. What he knew. And, and, I, and, I, and my wife didn't even attend the meeting because she knew we were going with this other guy, right? So she was upstairs with the kids and I interviewed him and I walked and I said, here's my price. Here's what I want in this pool. And this is what I want my backyard to look like. He's like, I got it. I said, you got it? And you got it for this price? He goes, 
do you mind giving me tomorrow afternoon and let me send you my vision? I said, yeah. And he, said, he called me the next day, hey, I'm done. Let me, and he did this whole Vizio thing and I, he blew me away. I said, honey, you got to check this out. And guess who got the pool? It was the right time. It was the right time. I had never heard of this company before. But they got my business. And it was one, it, I wasn't impressed over the phone. And the website, it was kind of a bait and switch. I knew I wasn't going to get that pool, that visual pool. But he blew me away. And, and then, um, so it was timing. I'd never heard of him. And that 50 cent postcard got me to call. That's all it takes. Okay? It's timing, guys. Y'all need to do this. Just dedicate. That's why I asked someone emailed to me today on, hey, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about doing some, getting in the real estate business. I said, I just need to know two things. How much time you have and how much money you're going to spend on marketing. Monthly. That's all I need to know. That's going to tell me whether you're successful or not. If you, no one knows me. None of these owners out there back here, they don't know me. I have to every month let them know who I am and what I do. This is not brain surgery, okay? Again, it's a slow process, but it works. One to two percent, guys. <laughs> it's not five percent, one to two percent response rate. Yes. The, the question was, does that price include the post-its? And it's not me. I can give you the guy who, but that's what he's going to charge you. All right, so this is not a great return, right? One to two percent is not good. But it, it's, again, one percent can make you enough money, all right, to live on. Once you start doing some deals, then you can start bumping it up and ratcheting it up to 5000 a month. Okay? But again, the key word is mail local. Don't spread out, in my opinion. All right. So after mailing 1,500 postcards, you get a 1% response rate. 15 people call. How many of those owners do you think are actually motivated? Less than 30%. So they're like time kickers or time wasters. So I, I really, I book appointments with probably four to five of them, if that makes sense. And then out of those, I make offers on all four to five. So again, you're going to have to, and some months I don't get 1%. I get zero. I don't, I didn't, but does that mean that I, I don't mail the next month? I just, you do it constantly. Some months you'll get two deals, some months you'll get one deal. I don't get discouraged. I didn't buy anything at the last auction. I'm going next month because I, I do the same thing, right? I have a process that I follow. Y'all just need to set up that process in your business. So what about handling calls? I'm going to just real quickly, Lisa, do you want to come up here? Do you mind coming up here? Y'all give Lisa a hand. We've been a customer of yours for four Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. She just said she didn't like me. I don't, did y'all hear that? Okay. We've been a customer of theirs for 14 years. Awesome. All right. So you take that. <laughs> okay. Test, test. Okay. I'm going to turn this on. So Lisa, I'm going to be the investor. Let me see how this works. Yeah. I'll be the investor and you'll be the seller calling me. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. So you can kind of follow along if you'll stand, but don't fall right there. Okay. Um, before we do that, Lisa, I want to go over this, this screen. I forgot we had this screen. So understand that there's two types of callers right there's motivated and there's unmotivated before you pick up the phone to answer Lisa's call all right um, Lisa is a seller and I'm the investor she's calling it's an it's an inbound call I want to mentally be prepared I, I just feel like I try to uh, the smile right I try to smile when I, I know it sounds cheesy but I feel like that might convey when I'm smiling, all right, when I answer the phone. And the other thing is I try to not be on the couch 
Does that make sense? When someone calls me, I kind of like be standing up and just, all right, here we go. And so those are the two things that I try to do, Lisa, when I see that it's an inbound call from one of my postcards. Stand up and smile. Just, all right, here we go. Hello? Yeah, I'm ready. So, all right. Um, the three, what are your three goals when someone calls in? Determine if they're looking to sell at a discount or retail. Guys, we are not retail home buyers. If you're looking for retail, you need to call a realtor. I mean, that's what I tell people. We're discount home buyers. Are they looking to sell now? It's okay if they're not, because we can stay in touch with them, but I just wanted to find, I mean, what are your goals? Are you looking to sell in the next 30 days? And then number three is book the appointment. Y'all should be working, a working an area that you don't mind driving three times a week, right? So it shouldn't be a burden for you to re juggle your schedule for, to go out and look at a property in the next 24 hours. Does that make sense? I'm not saying the, the same day, but within 24 hours. Okay, so here's the, here's the two-ish minute phone call. Ring, 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 okay. My name is George, and your name is, let's say, Jane. No, I'm just gonna say your name is Lisa, all right? So, <laughs> sorry, I had this, I should have done this better. So, ring, 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 you're gonna call, you're gonna call me, so go ahead and do it. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> Thanks for calling George Buys Houses, may I help you? Yes, this is Lisa. I was calling to see if maybe you could buy my house. Lisa, I love calls like yours. <laughs> Okay, so usually they're not as bubbly as that, right? That was too oh, easy, right? I'm hoping that yeah. you can buy my house and help so me I, that's what I would out say. of this situation. This is George. Yeah, thanks for calling George Buys Houses. Who am I speaking with? This is Lisa. Lisa. Okay, so not John. Great, Lisa. Thanks for calling. My name is George again. I assume you called because you're thinking about selling your house. Is that correct? That is. Okay. So you got a postcard from us, correct? I did. See, what I'm trying to do is get her to say yes, yes, all right? Great. What is your phone number, Lisa, if you don't mind me asking, just in case we get disconnected? It now, is. a lot of times you're not gonna need that because it's on your caller ID, but I just, this is what I'm asking my answering service to do, right? Because I have an answering service do this. Great. Uh, you know, what is the phone number? And then she says, XXX, XXX, XS. Okay, great. Got it. Lisa, what is the city and the address of the property you're thinking about selling? It's Dallas 1234 Main Street. I was close. All right. I, it's <laughs> one, two, three. Yes. All right. So I got it. Okay. Dallas, 1234 Main Street. How many bedrooms and baths does that have? Has four bedrooms and two baths. And does it have a garage? It does, a two car garage. Two car garage. Is it vacant or occupied? So I'm just going through, I just keep on asking questions until she starts, I don't wanna stop it. I'm just collecting information. And is it vacant or occupied? We live in it. You do, okay. So. How soon are you looking to sell, Lisa? Well, we have a peculiar situation. So I, I love peculiar. Think. <laughs> Talk to me, yes. So I think so we you, need to move pretty fast. Maybe a month one or month, two. One month, two months? Okay. All right. So I'd like to come out, Lisa, and look at your property, either today or tomorrow. But let me ask you a question. Do you, hap do you happen to have a price in mind? that you're looking to sell this property for, I know you don't want to give it away. We can both agree that I'm not going to offer you a lowball offer, and you're not going to sell it to me at a lowball price, but do you have some kind of price in mind? Well... What's the minimum? Have you, I mean, I'm not trying to, sorry yeah. to cut you off, but... We, we really need to get 250000 for it. Ouch. Ouch. No, I'm kidding. I don't usually, I usually don't say that, but I, we're being, yeah. But you go, wow, wow, 250. <laughs> right, some kind of, ooh, mm-hmm. Oh, I see, I see. So, ouch, 
uh-huh, or I see, okay, or wow. Wow is one of those if I, if, you know, I, it <laughs> might perturb her if I say wow. So, all right, basically from that point forward, I'm going to, because I may or may not know if this is 250,000 is good or not. If I work a certain area, I'll probably know. And at that point say, hey, let me crunch the numbers. What time tomorrow? Your goal is what? To find out if they're motivated, to see if they'll sell at a discount, and to book the appointment. So can I come by tomorrow? Or I'm looking at my schedule, Lisa. Would tomorrow at 3 p.m. work for you? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. What time would work for you? Probably 5.30 to 6. 5.30 today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. So your husband's going to be home. Good. Yeah. All right. Let me do this. I've got you down between 5.30 and 6 tomorrow. I will be there. If something changes with you, I want to give you my direct line. Okay. And so I go into that. And then if, if something changes with me, I'm going to call you. Okay. Does that sound good? Great. All right. I can't wait to see your house and meet you in person tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. I'll you. see you tomorrow, Lisa. Okay. All right. Give her a hand. I just wanted to give them the two. Yeah. Okay. Lisa here, hold on. You want to go down this way? Oh, sure. I'll okay. I would hate to blow out a knee or something. I've done that before. So, all right. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa asked, you ever asked them, how did they come up with that valuation? And a lot of times they don't know. They just throw this thing out. So, again, what I'm trying to do is psychology tells me that they've, they've taken a step towards selling the property. Booking an appointment is a step. And that's one step closer than that I was five minutes ago. So again, that's one script. You guys could modify it. Oh, I hate the way George did that, or I love it, or something in between. But guys, ask them questions. Keep on asking questions until they stop you. And then book the appointment. What time today can I come out? Can I come out today at 3, tomorrow at 3? And then what kind of price are you thinking about? You should probably know, um, you know, when she gives you the address. But honestly, I might, be, I might not know if that's a good deal. But I can always call her back and say, Lisa, I've looked at the comps. And 250 is way above what what I might be offering. Are you negotiable on that? Are you, are you negotiable? Okay. Because if you're, if you're standing firm on 250, I don't, I don't think I should come out there. But if you're negotiable, I can't wait to see you. And that, that's how I leave it. But I'm going to do my comps, see if it's worth 400000 375000 um, I know that the house probably needs some work. But I'd rather just get there, book the appointment before I go, well, how old's the carpet? How old's the roof? How old's the HVAC? I'm going to need to see the house anyway. So get, you know, what I would say for a lot of you guys, you need the practice. Y'all need to go on appointments, right? Y'all been thinking about it, talking about it for a long time. Nothing is going to help you, Randy. Randy knows this by doing reps. Repetition, repetition. So... Randy goes on a lot of appointments, um, you know, 10 years ago he hadn't, maybe 15, but now he's like, uh, he's going to do it probably a little differently because he's got so many reps under his belt, but most of you guys need to go on these appointments and really cut your teeth and be nervous, okay? All right, um, the last thing I wanted to do, I think that's it. Let's review. So, guys, I want you to put some type of marketing pieces. And what are the three components of your marketing piece? You want to grab, ask, promise. Whatever kind of marketing piece you want. Grab their attention. Ask a question. Make a promise. You're going to per personalize it. You're going to get your owner leads, 1,500, 1,000, whatever you're comfortable with. I I'm not here to tell you to spend your money. Y'all got to be prepared. But if you're not going to answer your phone, it's kind of pointless in my opinion. Y'all got to answer the phone. If you're not going to answer it because you have a day job, there's an answer. Have an answering service do it for you. 
okay? I don't answer my phone because I'm with, I'm on appointments, I'm with students, I'm, I'm teaching tonight. I want someone 24 hours a day to answer my phone and say, George buys, thanks for calling George buys houses. What is your name? Thanks for calling. What's your name? Who am I speaking with? Boom. They're booking appointments. And I just tell them, look, book 3 p.m. the following day. You got it. Just email me. They text me because I always keep try to keep my afternoons open. You have my every day besides Sunday to book an appointment. If so, a call comes in on Friday, book it for 3 p.m. the next day. Okay? Then they send me a text, and, that, that, and, and they give me the address, and then I go to work, and what can I do? Hey, Lisa, are you negotiable on this price? I don't think 250 is going to work for me. If you're negotiable, I'd love to see you tomorrow. Or, no, we need 250 George. You know what, Lisa? I'm going to have to pass. I wanted to call you personally and tell you I'm not going to come tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thank you so much for calling in. If you change your mind, I'd love to come over, but... I can't see me making you an offer for 250 Okay? Send your mail. Do this monthly. Do it monthly. All right, questions. Anybody got questions? Yes, sir. You get one question, sir. The second one's $5. Okay? Bethany, keep track of this guy. I don't... Hmm. Go ahead, sir. So the first question is, what criteria do I use for comps? So I typically will, will look um, the last eight months in the same subdivision. I'll use any comp that's, that's sold within the last eight months of that sub subdivision. Um, it has to be within 15, I don't want to say how, it has to be within 20% in size variation. Yeah, so if it's a 2,000 square foot house, Right, 2,400, 1,600, and five years in age. So up or down. If the house is built in 1957, 52 to 62. No. I do, I do not. I, I'm okay if there's a 1,900 square foot, three bedroom, and an 1,800 four bedroom. I look at per square feet. Now, I know that some people, oh, that four bedroom's worth more. I really hone it down to the top three comps in that subdivision. I average those three. That's, that's now your second question was, it cost you $5, so what was it? I use the Trek 20-12. Is it 13 or 12? No, it's 12. 13? No, it's 12. 20 so it's the promulgated contract. The nine, the long promulgated contract. Yes, sir. Yeah. The one to four promulgated 20-12 is when you Google it, Trek 20-12. Yep. Now, I might write it a little differently, but I use that form because every agent is used to seeing that and every title company is used to receiving it. So, yeah, there's other two-page forms that you can pick up at Office Depot. I just, I like blending in. Yes, sir. You know, yellow, usually. Yeah. Canary yellow, yes. Are you hitting her again in four months after she's... Yes. Well, I'm first going to put her in a database that says she said no or not right now. And then in four months, yeah, I'm not taking her off unless she's one that I'm going to look and see if the ownership has changed. So I have one that I've met with. And then I, before I mail her again, I have someone look at has ownership changed. If it hasn't, I pull, uh, she's getting another marketing piece. Hey, when you said that I don't. No. But yeah, the question was, how do you manage all the people that say, take me off your list? And I just say, you know, I'll, look, uh, I'll talk to my manager about that. Yeah. And then I don't. And then they call me in four months. I told you, take me off your list. I'm like, 
I thought my manager looked into that. Let me look into that. Let me get my manager to re-look into that. And then I don't. <laughs> I'm going to sue you. You know what? Now I'm going to talk to my manager face to face. All right? This is getting... And then I don't. Yeah. But I usually say, all right, I'm not trying to be cynical here, but do you call Domino's when they mail you? Exactly. So you don't want to sell your house. I get it. Toss it in the trash. Just like when Domino's sends you or Papa John's, you're not a fan. Toss it in the trash. You know, they spent money. I spent money. So anyway, I usually don't say that because it doesn't end well. But Chris, what's that? The, yeah. All right, any other questions besides? There you go. Yes, in the back. Yes, sir. Yeah. The tax issue? Okay, so the contract that I use says that the taxes will be prorated. So the, pro, the promulgated tax or the promulgated contract says when we close, the taxes will be prorated. And so I, I, I tell the seller, I'm going to pay for the title policy. I'm going to pay for the escrow fees. But the balance of your loan and the property taxes from January 1st to June 23rd when we're, is going to be your responsibility. So I make sure I talk to them because then you don't want them to come to closing and say, you told me that you were paying all the closing costs. We want to make sure that they don't think taxes is a closing cost because it's not. Yes, sir, in the back. Where do you find your, the leads? It's one of the better questions. Did y'all hear that? Where do you buy the, um, the, a lot of the leads we provide as a company for closure listing service? So Rebecca, Lamar, you can call us. We've got a booth back there. But there's some leads like the vacants, the code violations. We don't provide those. The NODs, um, probate, we used to provide those. I'm trying to talk Dad into why did we stop. So, but until I think Propelio searches for probate leads. So we, I think Propelio, we do pre-foreclosures, post-bankruptcy, absentee, high equity. A lot of those leads I went over, we provide. And we're not exorbitant in our opinion. I mean, um, and I'm biased, but, you know, if you wanted to get 4,000 leads, it would cost you $400, 10 cents a lead. Okay, and that should take care of you for the year. Yes, sir, in the back. I just say, any kind of information you can give me, I'm trying to come up with the best price, and I just want to know if I'm in the ballpark. I don't want to waste your time. The, the biggest thing is, you want to sell your house, I want to buy your house. But I don't want to, I, oh, the question, yeah. The question was, what if they won't give you a ballpark? What if Lisa said, you know what, I, I'm going to let you come up with something? I'd say, great, but... Can you kind of give me a ballpark? And if you don't know, that's fine. I'm going to run the comps. I'm going to see you tomorrow. But if, if they tell me something that I feel is above market, um, sometimes I'm going to waste time going out on an appointment. Here's the other thing. I always do a title search on them before I go on the appointment. I want to know how much debt they have, how many loans they have on their property before I go on the appointment because I've, been, I've gone on appointments where we negotiated a great price and then the title company calls me two weeks later or a week before closing and says, man, we got an IRS lien uh, that popped up against the seller. I'm like, really? I call the seller. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'd rather know that before I go on the appointment. And that title search should only take you, Lisa, 15 minutes max to do a title search. You want to know all the liens I have against my house? You know, I don't have that common of a last name. It's not going to take you more than 10 minutes. Using the appraisal district and jumping on the county clerk, Roddy is pretty 
you, not unique, but there's not a lot of Roddy's in my county. So do a title search. That's how you can overcome, and, and then you can kind of ballpark it just from that. Yes, sir. They don't, they lie. I mean, they don't know. So I don't even ask them anymore because I know how to do a title search. I just, hey, how many liens you, uh, well, I mean, they sometimes aren't aware that they, a mechanics lien filed a $27,000 lien. Like I was doing a rehab and um, the guy filed a lien against me because we had a dispute. I didn't know. Now, um, he sent me the letter, but sometimes they don't send letters, so I just jump on the county clerk and do that. Over here, we've got a couple more. What time is it? Let's see. Sorry, 826. We've got three more, three more minutes, so yes, sir. So once you're uh, laying the offer, most people say like 70% of Yeah, generally it's... You know, I think what it comes down to, the question was, what's your general range of offer? It, it, it's 70 to 75 percent of ARV. Yeah. Um, 75 minus repairs. 75, 25 percent off ARV minus repairs. We went over that Saturday. ARV minus 25 percent for profit, holding, and closing costs minus rehab. Now, Here's, the, here's where we differentiate. I'll get you, Wilco. You might think the house is worth less or more than me. Who's doing the valuation on ARV? Right? I know you are, but if I was looking at the same house, I might see something that makes me think the house is less desirable or more. What do you think the desirability of backing up to a school do you think that's more desirable or less desirable? What about, you know, a pasture? More desirable? See, I'm going to, you know, what if it backs up to a creek? Or what if it backs up to a two-lane street? See, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, it's not just about comps. It's also about where the, the house sits. Does it back up to a highway? How much do you take off for that? I know the answer, but do you? In my opinion. But again, these are all opinions. We'll cope. I mean, really, I don't think you need to use any CRM. I mean, Excel is not, you know, Microsoft um, Outlook. You can keep, you know, I put my stuff on my calendar. So I use Outlook. You know, I use, I, you know, I have another company that I do some other things with, and I use a, com a, a service called Insightly. So Insightly is, is kind of a, is a good, it's cheap, it costs me 20 bucks a month to CRM. But honestly, I use Outlook, because right when I get off the phone, boom, I schedule on my calendar, which is synced to my phone. I use Outlook. Yeah, all right. Yes, sir. This is your second question, isn't it? Okay. Bethany, got it. I try to mix it up where they don't get the same card back to back. No. Uh, I mean, you know, I'll have maybe my wife's photo. And don't tell her she doesn't know. She goes out. Okay, never. Um, I've got some of her friends here, but and then I might send you know something without her picture, just with the the, the ask a question, make a promise. So um, yeah, I I generally I only have like three postcards that I use, and I have one letter that I use, and that letter is more for pre foreclosures. I send out a letter that. Um, you know, just basically says, hey, I'll make you an offer, and I pull in the appraisal district value, so I can kind of, I do some valuation off that. But I use a check letter, so I use, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We've all received a check in the mail, right? Well, I use that same letter. I go to Office Depot, and I use the, the refill, and I print, and it says their name, and it says payable to the order of $19,743. So they see their name, and then it says 19000 I guarantee you they open it. And then it says, hi, 
This is an example of what I'd like to give you in the next two weeks. And, you know, it's going to go in the trash 98% of the time. Yeah, I might get a little bit better, but I use, that's the only letter I use, is I print it, and it has my signature on it, and it's a check, right? You turn it over, you can endorse it. It just doesn't have the ABA and the routing, you know, the routing number and the account number. So that's what I use for my letter. And I just put that in my inkjet or my laser, 200, 20 minutes, boom. The, the Security 9 envelopes, those are the double window Security 9 envelopes. I do that and have the kids, you know, they got to earn their keep. So have them stuff. And uh, we're off to the races on Friday. All right, guys. Yes, sir, Vance. Yeah, one of my students, um, he's done very well. He doesn't do any direct mail. I mean, he's like, ah, he calls. He knocks on doors and calls. Um, and, you know, he really likes TLO. He's using Spokio Enterprise. I don't know, you know, I've got an account that I'm supposed to beta test. He likes calling. Uh, he's Asian, very, you know, um, he just, he's just a bubbly kind of personality. And um, he just calls. He doesn't do a lot of direct mail. And he's, he's doing well, but it's, he knocks on doors and he calls a lot of people saying, hey, do you own that property on 1234 Main Street? Do you want to sell it? And he gets a lot of no's, but he, he's making more than six figures a year by just doing that. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat, right? This is one way. I hope you guys have learned something. If you have, put your hands together. There's three of you. Thank you. Thank you so much.